I'm always down a series gets weird. Sometimes it's a good weird, like going to space. I mean, Leprechaun 4 is a party movie and Jason X is pretty close to it as well. It's okay, he just wanted his machete back. Or when you make a film 3D and it just gets ridiculous, like My Bloody Valentine. Or when you turn the franchise into some sort of anthology film. Hats off to Darcy for leading the charge and recognizing the great mustache Tom Atkins. Stop it! Stop it! But sometimes it's a bad thing, like going to space, or making the film 3D. Then there's today's selection that does something a little different but maintains those often mixed results. Now for the Child's Play or Chucky series, there are a couple of constants. You got Brad Dorf giving it his all as a voice of Chucky in every film and TV series, except of course the remake, which doesn't count. And Don Mancini, the co-creator and creator of every movie, the writer of every movie, and director of Seed and Onward. Except, of course, the remake, but, you know, doesn't count. And Mancini has done a handful of other fun projects, like being a writer on Tales from the Crypt and the woefully underseen Channel Zero that aired on Sci-Fi. His writing has always had a particular flair to it, and he's a huge fan of the horror genre. His previous entry was his own twisted homage to Bride of Frankenstein, and today's entry is twofold. On the surface, it pays respect to the son of Frankenstein, Look closer, and he's going into the deep cuts with a nod to the famous or infamous Ed Wood with the names of Glenn and Glenda. Seed of Chucky didn't fare well with reviewers, but doubled its budget, and it has some fans that will die on the hill that it's good. I myself go back and forth on Seed. But like any Black Sheep entry, there's something here that deserves a second look or a first from those who have chosen to avoid the shift to comedy in a series that is very much horror in its roots. Mancini made the choice to lean into the comedy much more after watching Chucky's contemporaries become less and less scary with each entry. After part three, which I have an affection for, but can still agree with the masses and admit that the series was losing steam. By that point, we were doing the same thing over and over. And after the f***ing magnificent Child's Play 2, I hate kids. Three seems especially rough in comparison. The well has run dry and Chucky himself needed a reinvention. So Ronnie Yu and Mancini turned what was becoming a bit of a joke into the perfect blend of stylized horror comedy for the 90s generation. And again, films going comedy can still be great. Evil Dead 2 definitely leans more into the comedy side and is agreed upon as a superior entry. But the question that must be asked is what's the perfect balance? Following what at first you'd expect to be Chucky coming out of some sort of toy chest, but things immediately feel off. The hands don't look like Chucky, and we aren't greeted with the trademark smartass, the Brad Dorf and bodies. A flash of lightning provides a different shape than we are used to. Mom and Dad are killed, and we get the horror genre staple of gore, nudity, and some good jump scares. This all abruptly ends when the doll sees who he is, and is confronted by a little girl. Things get weird, he pees his pants, and we get the movie turned on us, with the discovery that this is a doll's nightmare. He wakes up in a cage having actually peed himself and is pulled out to be a part of a ventriloquist act. The film turns meta, I mean really it's really really meta and probably its biggest fault. After what we think is the introduction of the previous film stars getting reintroduced, the scene unfolding is actually a film being made about the legend of Chucky and Tiffany from Bride of Chucky. Okay, here's the thing. The meta boom from 1996 was getting stale at this point and Seed of Chucky leans all the way in. The new doll Glenn sees Chucky and Tiffany on TV, realizes it's his parents, escapes his captor, and sets off to be reunited. Jennifer Tilly is meeting with rapper turned actor slash director Redman to discuss her role as a Virgin Mary in his new film. <laughs> okay, I'll give this credit. Seed knows what it's doing. I am with child. But Mary, how could this be? Meanwhile, Glenn makes his way to set, where he finds his parents and uses the amulet left to him to bring the movie props back to life. We get the explanation that the dolls were made from the remains of the actual killer dolls, and it's an explanation that is good enough for me and could be a lot worse. I mean, let's be honest, when it comes to resurrecting horror icons, you just kind of have to go with it. 
Dog piss brought back Freddy. Electricity brought back Jason. Uh, so this isn't that far off. We get a reunion of sorts, and the two then discuss another one of the film's central concepts. Is their child a boy named Glenn, or a girl named Glenda? And some credit must be given, as this was some pretty advanced stuff in 2004, and is especially relevant today when discussing gender identity. Uh, kudos to Mancini. Jennifer Tilly discovers a body and suddenly becomes the press's number one subject. The murderous doll family follows Tilly home with plans to transfer their souls into the bodies of Tilly and Redman. The family gets into a heated discussion about their child's gender and whether they will grow up to be a killer when Tiffany convinces Chucky to give it all up. The movie allows Jennifer Tilly and Brad Dorff to shine. And as problematic as this movie might be, you must give it up for Jennifer Tilly. She plays an exaggerated version of herself, as well as the doll that makes fun of the actress. Of course, this is all meta and it leans way into it, but she knocks it out of the park here. Their plan extends to not only transfer themselves into the actors, but also inseminate Tiffany with the titular seed and transfer Glenn, or Glenda, into the newborn baby. Being that this is the early 2000s, we get a, a little poke at Britney Spears. It again. <laughs> and also, the paparazzi is played by the great John Waters, which is perfect casting, by the way. He shows up at the house to catch them in the act when he stumbles onto the doll's plans and ends up, like so many, dead. His death is pretty grisly by accident, but is ultimately the accident caused by Glenn, who feels terrible about it. Okay, by now it's obvious that Seed has gone full meta to the point of parody. And what's strange is it's the last remnant of that Scream-style boom in the mid-90s. But here's the deal. John Waters is a f***ing legend, and I can't criticize him for showing up as a sleaze and getting a great death. Now, does John Waters belong in a Child's Play movie? No. But at this point, we aren't really watching one. Almost a, a Gremlins 2 parody-esque commentary on the series itself. Chucky confronts Glenn about him not killing. We discover that Glenn has become Glenda, and followed in the footsteps of his mom and dad. So we jump to the end, where Tiffany is about to transfer into Tilly, when Chucky buries an axe in her head, because nobody leaves him. Nobody leaves me. As she dies, she tells Glenn to be the best boy or girl they want to be. And I'll give it credit, it's one of the sweetest and, you know, heartfelt lines in the series. Glenn absolutely destroys his pops. Cut to five years later, and Jennifer Tilly has her two kids, one good in Glenn and one evil in Glenda, when her maid quits out of fear for the latter. Tilly kills her with the Tiffany doll in one of the more surreal moments of weaponizing oneself, and the film then ends with a stinger to continue on the series. So, Seed is probably the best example of interesting and bold intentions that sounded good on paper, not translating, when it's all said and done. When Bride of Chucky did well, it revitalized the series. But the problem is that Bride was refreshing, yet couldn't sustain that momentum. Because admitting that Chucky is kind of a joke will get old quick. And leaning into that joke produces Seed of Chucky. And for a drinking game or a stoner session, it has its merits. But there's a reason Curse of Chucky went back to straight horror. I worked at an independent theater in Glenwood when this came out. And we watched it before its release with all of my friends. And I can't deny the fun we all had. As any movie that's viewed in a party setting, we laughed, we cheered, and I have fond memories of it. I even took the poster from the Glenwood Theater, which I still have to this day. Is it a good movie? Ah, not really. Is it a good Chucky movie? Ah, not really. But the special effects are pretty great. Like every entry, the puppeteering and dolls get better and better as they go on. The performances are rock solid, Brad Dorf kicks ass, Jennifer Tilly steals the show, but where most people fall off is the stark difference between this entry and those that came before and after, and I can't really blame them. It would be another nine years before the next installment and following films would go back to mostly horror as they were before, even before Bride came out. Seed is a weird little entry that, with enough time passed, can live on its own as a good bad movie. Hell, I've read that some people have been moved by its respect for Glenn and Glenda and its take on gender. And if this flick helps you, then f***ing A. Love it and defend it. I think of a great time in my younger days. 
So, you know, find what works or move on if it doesn't. Seed of Chucky doesn't always know what it wants to be, but if you go in looking for a dumb time without the expectations of the other films, you may find a little something. Like most Black Sheep entries, it's all about perspective. Hey, thanks for watching our show. Please subscribe to our Joe Blow Horror Videos channel. Tell your friends who like this sort of content and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. Listen, we're an independent company and we appreciate all of your support.